considered a qualification. And uh, what's nice here, she did a big Uchimata and then that uh, Kataguruma there in the opposite direction. Brilliant. Yeah, well and truly caught there. Right, we've got a second bronze medal contest coming up now. Guo Chongying of China goes up against Katarina Costa of Portugal. It'll be Guo in the white jirogi, Costa in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Katarina Marzog of Germany. Yeah, and what's so interesting here is that the Chinese don't do that many competitions. So, although uh, world ranking is at 46 there, uh, Gao uh, Zhongjing, it's, it doesn't mean much because uh, she's only just, uh, you know, the Chinese have put a big team out here at this tournament and uh, they're hoping for uh, world qualification points from every one of them. Yeah, they've had a, a long history of success with their women's team. Not so much the men, but definitely Olympic and world titles for their women's team. And they are just beginning to show signs now of having something to, to, to work with. Been off the boil for a couple of years. Yeah, I wonder why they leave it so late. I mean, it's two years now build up uh, to get points. And uh, now they're at almost every event. We saw a full team at the uh, Worlds. We've seen a full team here as well. So. Yeah, and I didn't... Uh, I, what I really meant was I, I, I didn't mean the last couple of years when we include the COVID yeah, yeah. Uh, up here because we were off for a year anyway. I meant really since... Goodness me, I mean, it could even be as long as... Beijing, you walk away with three gold medals, and after that, you, you're really scratching around. They did have a difficult time of it after that. Well, she's got a work cut out here with Costa, because Costa is a, a regular medal winner on the world tour. She's always there around about. Yeah, we've spoken about the kind of experience gap between some of the fighters here. And this will certainly be the case with Katarina Koshta, much, much more experienced than Kuo Zhongying. Yeah, I mean, you get a mixture, don't you? you you've got some... Uh, I mean, we've uh, had... Um, I'm just thinking now, a Portuguese fighter uh, who is... Uh, well, she's had four Olympic Games, five. This will be, uh, she's aiming for a fifth. Olympic you mean the, a couple of weights up? Yeah. Uh, Thelma Montero. Oh, yeah, Montero, yes. And, uh, and, I mean, you get somebody like that in her mid-30s, and uh, then you get the uh, youngsters coming through, the 17-year-olds. So, I mean, it really is a mix. Some trying to get to their first Olympic Games, some trying to get to their fifth. Olympic Games. Odd that you should mention uh, Tama Montero of Portugal. She competed in this competition, went out in the first round to Chinese. <laughs> 36 years old. Very unusual, though, to uh, see her go yeah. out first round. Yeah. <laughs> Big throw on the back. We saw some great Ippons today where some really big, massive throws landed them absolutely on the back and uh, finished it all off. Two was Aris Murbo making Ippon. going to get a uh, penalty for it. I'm not so sure that that was. It was for a, uh, a gripping infringement there. Three shidos and it will be all over. So she can't afford another one.
And I think that Costa's got to go to work here because she can't let her just pile on the attacks there. Otherwise, she'll find that she'll be penalised too. We never see them. We don't see them out. And then all of a sudden they come out uh, with world-class fighters, don't they? You know, I mean, some of these uh, uh, Chinese fighters we haven't seen before. That's going to be a penalty there for Costa. So she uh, just scooted out of the edge of the area there. And very high percentage of the ones that scurry out uh, get penalised for it. Sometimes they might get guided a little bit, but uh, it's a bit different if you get caught on the edge. I'm not at all sure that the Chinese coach knows the rule for coaching <laughs> only during the mate. But it is her, we can hear, right, all the way yeah, through yeah, exactly. this, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> she, she, she just and she's still going. I just said, yeah, okay. <laughs> Con continued. Did she get warned? She just, yeah, well, she just a, did, a yeah. second warning will get her removed from the chair. So uh, you're not allowed to actually coach. It won't be no, long. It's going to well, be there, now. There Here we go. And away Thanks, she goes. Yes. Absolutely. She, she doesn't know the rule. She doesn't know the rule. <laughs> but she has to go. <laughs> I, you know, I was listening to it and I thought, I'm sure there's somebody talking all the way through here, but of course it was the coach. You're not allowed to talk while they're fighting, only on the mates. Oh, and she's straight in for the shimmywaza here. That was a good transition. Just managed to scoop her head out of that, didn't she there, Costa? She knows how close that was. It snapped Absolutely it under, didn't snapped she? It under. You know, and I can't understand why they don't, uh, you know, now you have to snap it underneath the neck rather than across, they the, face. Uh, across the face and they don't get anything a for it. Mate. If they penalise for it, yeah. yeah. Just a matter. It's not worth not going for it. She stepped it up now. Kuo Chong Ying. Wow, you know. Yeah, my tempo's gone up. Well, and Costa is going to have to do something because she's just being outblasted here. Well, the coach may have been asked to leave the chair, but Gua, with a key eye, manages to keep things at uh, quite a level. <laughs> well, the is absolutely superb, I've got to say that, and uh, Costa as well. I mean, her work rate's always good, but she's just being outgunned here a little bit. Gior's going to steal this if she's not careful. And, you know, she hasn't really come under any serious threat of being thrown. If she just continues this, keeps the pressure on, just ups the tempo a little bit, Costa's going to pick up the third penalty. It's not a bad effort. That was as close as we've been to a good technique. Getting a score. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do, does he? Because uh, the, the coach there, the Portuguese coach, and he doesn't quite know what to suggest because she's just been out attacked here, Costa. One more she don't be all over. Untidy effort on the ground by Costa when she really needed to slow Gua down. There, missed the chance. Going to come up with another attack. That'll be it now. Yep, that's it. I think so. I, so I, for me, it's too late now. The attempted counter. Yeah, that's, you know, it, it's not rocket science, is it?
I, I know the Portuguese coach isn't happy with the hand soccer Mace, but it wasn't one penalty, it wasn't two penalties, it was three. Costa yeah. got penalised three times, and it wasn't as though you and I sitting here didn't know what, were going, what was going on. We knew what was going to happen, we, we, we were talking it through, and surely an experienced coach as he is, absolutely one, you know, one of the top players from, from Portugal in the past. He should, have been, he should have known that and he should have been able to get that across to his athlete, who is an experienced athlete. She, just, uh, she lost the uh, thread there and uh, was being outgunned all the way through. And uh, that was the right amount of uh, attacks. That was a good attack there from Costa, but she fell behind for sure. And uh, from uh, penalty two to penalty three, it was absolutely correct. Neil quite often talks about different ways to win in judo. We can go through the ways, but we know you at home uh, know them. In the absence of those techniques, you've got to find another way to win. And tactically, Guo Zhongying did the right thing. We come now to the final of the under 48 kilo category. Yulia Figueroa of Spain goes up against Francesca Milani of Italy. It'll be Figueroa in the white jadogi, Milani in blue. Here is the route to the final. We're talking about experienced coaches. Well, two experienced coaches, one for Spain and one for Italy, both terrific competitors themselves. But it's down to the people in the middle to take care of business down. The referee in the middle for this one is Mariana dos Santos of Brazil. Here's Neil. Yeah, this, uh, this should be an absolute cracker here. Figueroa made easy work of her semi-final and Milani, well, Milani world rank 15, her world ranking's going up and up. Figueroa is three. Uh, they've met three times already. This is the fourth time they've met here. And uh, Figueroa just ahead on their head-to-head -head by two to one. Had to get past her younger teammate, didn't she, Francesca Milani? She defeated uh, Asunta Scuto in the... Who's actually the higher on the world rankings Absolutely. as well. But it was Number a six. massive Osoto, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Beautiful technique. Yeah. So here we go, Figueroa played her semi-final very intelligently. She really did. Oh, nearly ran onto that Uchimata there. A little bit of a scare there. She just managed to uh, root her feet. Quite a bit taller than Figueroa is Milani. But that's not surprising with Figueroa. She's the shortest in the weight category. Trying for the Osoto again there, Milani. <laughs> left against right, uh, Figueroa, left-handed. Milani right, and it normally kind of gives you that W effect there with the legs, and you have to be a little bit careful because if you go in with big guns blazing, you can sometimes be countered. So you have to be careful for the uh, what we call the sakeshi, which is the uh, counter technique, and uh, they use your own momentum against you. Penalty to Figueroa. Nice as she was, huh? We were talking about the athletes who'd, you know, had run out at the World Championships or competed at the World Championships. And Figueroa 
was one of those she lost in the bronze medal contest against Assunta Scuto of, uh, of Italy. Lost in the semi-final to, to Caterina Menz. Caterina Menz, what a revelation that was. Didn't see that one uh, coming. Yeah, there were some surprises, weren't there, in that uh, World Championships, to say the least. So she's dominating the sleeve here, Figueroa, of Milani, and needs to take advantage of it. Not far off there with that Uchimata. And looking for the uh, turn, she need to go underneath the armpit to do it. Milani not having any of it. There was the Uchimata, and then the transition in to the uh, turnover. Just to, to see how things can turn around. Milani picking up the penalty, as does Figueroa. Figueroa on a second penalty here. Milani lost in round three of the World Championships, whilst her teammate went on to get bronze medal. That's what pushed the, the points up. This, however, should help here, especially if she takes the gold. Oh, she's going to get a score, is she? I don't think it quite was too much on the front, wasn't it, there? Kosoto, they're going to have a look at it. They will have a look at it. We'll be able to have a look in slow motion there just to see where the landing was. It wasn't quite there. It's got to be around about 90 degrees. The yeah. landing, so uh, it hasn't been given anyway. No, I think they've decided as well that they're seeing that's an up. on though. Well, that's done. I think it's uh, all over there. Figueroa manages uh, Yoko Garuma and just takes a flat onto her back. The winner and gold medalist for the just switched off, didn't she? she Francesca just absolutely Milani. switched off, didn't she? Stood there, no resistance whatsoever to that effort from Yulia Figueroa. Just had a back to her, and then she just scooted round for the Yoko Garuma, and the momentum was enough there. Just took a flat on her back. It could have been Kata. This is the third gold medal in a Grand Slam for Julia Figueroa, Spain. Just everything going for Figueroa here. No resistance, the top half just rolled easily in that Sotemi was up. On the big screen, we can see the highlights of this final contest. You expect some resistance. Yeah, competition variation, yeah, but it's all about momentum, isn't it? And some of the sweetest techniques. Uh, the simplest ones, aren't they? They really are. They just happen. Everything works together. Hands, feet, body, everything works together. Coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contests in the under 60 kilo category. Turan Biramov of Azerbaijan goes up against Ballet Bey Agaev, his teammate. It'll be Beyramov in the white jadogi, Agaev in blue. Not the nicest of situations when you have to go up against your teammate, but that happens from time to time. The referee in the middle for this one is Jean-Claude Jimby of Gabon. Well, you know, both of these guys came out to this tournament to gain experience. One of them is going to go away with a, a bronze medal, the other one fifth place. They know what the score is. They're here to get the best possible result for themselves so now <laughs> they've got their ideal chance to prove it i doubt very much whether there'll be any coach out there that's not normally So a local derby between these two here in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> and, uh, 
Absolutely. I'm guaranteed these uh, guys will uh, train together. Probably fought each other a lot uh, in local competitions. And that is a, a really good... I think there were two parts to that. And uh, that Yoko Toshi there just taking his opponent over flat onto his back. It's because it had two halves there that it won't score. It went once, then it went again. If it's one smooth movement, if it's constantly pushing off the back leg, then they will count it. If it's one movement or continuous movement. a little bit generous yeah I'm not so sure about the landing I'm sure that they'll review that they'll be reviewing it now the video referees the supervisors will be just having a little look just to see if that did get the landing you you can only score the landing doesn't matter how high it goes but they score the landing well they liked it they stayed on the board so it was Ari for a guy just to follow up on Neil's point when he's talking about the landing, well, he's going to get called for a step out there, the guy have that landing. He's down the side of the body, upper and lower. And if there's enough of it to warrant the score, then they'll, um, they'll give that. They'll have a quick look after each action just to make sure that it meets the criteria and what it does. They'll either say, yes, you can continue on, or they'll stop and have a fuller review and then change, change the score if necessary. But on that occasion, must have looked at the landing and said, yep, yeah, that's good. And that was away from the referee. He saw it once at speed gave the score and that stood so unless they can see something that is clearly that clearly indicates that there should not have been a score they're not going to change the decision of the referee in the middle so you know there are quite a few times when in the commentary position we might think that is a score or that's not a score and yet the referee in the middle has got to do that very very quickly and he only gets one look at it. So, good decision there. And it's Agaev who leads by Wazari with a little over a minute and a half to go. Single Shido against him as well. That little Kosoto there, it's, uh, it's so um, strong, isn't it, when these guys do it? You know, it's, we, we get some fighters and they'll just drop down to the side hoping for a little bit of momentum to take somebody over, but they seem to have that little latch into the power phase. Great change of direction there by Agaev. Baramov then has to come forward. He's got to take a few chances here. Is that going to be over? Uh, 30 seconds then to go he's touching the leg there uh, I mean absolutely using his elbow on that leg 
surely that's uh, it might be a shido there yeah spotted by the referee he might also have spotted a cut lip not enough to call a halt to the proceeding so we continue Beramov is letting this one slip I'm afraid It's gone now. One second on the clock. It's definitely gone. It's all over. And it's going to be a, a bronze medal to, uh, for Agaev. Yeah, Balabe Agaev getting past his teammate, Turan Beramov. I'll just put a little bit more distance between them in the world ranking list. 26 Agaev and 33 Beramov. Agaev it is who takes the bronze medal. Some of the Azeri coaching staff watching on. No need for them to be in the chair. Not when the two athletes are from the same country. Usually. Just gets the landing there with that uh, Kosoto. Coming up next, the second of the bronze medal contests in the under 60 kilo category. Sali Yildiz of Turkey goes up against Tumur Nozadze of Georgia. It will be Yildiz in the white Jidogi, Nozadze in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Jandas Kiyanov of Kazakhstan. Well, the Georgians had two starting this, and they'll have two on the uh, rostrum, or two possibilities anyway, if he wins this uh, particular match. A lot of depth in the 60s, 66s, and 73s. Well, all the way up, up they, really, if you think about it. The Georgians, really, so much depth. Yes, that's a tough school to come through. The school of Georgian judo. You get to the top of that tree, you must have been through quite a battle to come out on top there. And you see it on the international circuit. Always competitive. Yeah, competitive in every way. Everyone they put out there is uh, well conditioned and uh, and up for it, up for a fight. These two have uh, got similar kind of styles, really. They're extreme right to right, very awkward. They want that uh, big right arm over the back there to cause havoc. See a lot of that uh, double lapel turn to start it off for the hold down. Yield has lost his round two contest at the World Championships to Francisco Garrigos of Spain. Yildiz as well that had to come through uh, Repercharge final 
Lost in the quarterfinals, then uh, had to come through a final rapid charge against Kalmatov of the Ukraine. And Nazadze lost in the semi final. So, of course, he just dropped down immediately for a bronze medal match. Is that going to be a score? Is it enough? The referee didn't even call it. far off there was he with that Ochi Gary there just reaping the inside of the leg driving his opponent backwards but just managed to prevent the side landing no place at the world championships for Nozadze even though he's highly um, ranked number eight in the world you'd expect you know someone in the top ten Unless they're from Japan. Oh, almost to be getting a, a, a run out at the World Championships. It was Lukumi Chukvimiani who got the shot because he's ranked number seven. So one place higher. And they probably wanted, well, they definitely wanted to save the other spots in different weights where they felt they had a better chance. He's not finished yet, is he? <laughs> That's yeah, having a good pull there. So Nazazi then just uh, looking dominant, but he's got to be careful Ooh. of that because he's gone over the top here. You let see them. Big Sienaghi and takes him over the top there for a Wazari into the last minutes and now he's got it all to do kind of uh, loaded himself up for that I have to say very little time left always difficult when you're scored against in the last minute Yildiz picks up a penalty he can afford to burn one more he was lucky to come up with that left-sided effort there because for a moment that looked like a drop Nazadze pressing forward now oh, tied the sleeves up yeah, it's all over. That uh, drops in Aggie off the sleeves there and uh, just takes him over for a second, was Harry. That was really good work. Well, like you said uh, about the world rankings there, you let's see who's 50 coming into this, ranked 50, but uh, I think that will change here now with this medal. He didn't really look as if he got into that, did he, Nazadzi? There, there was a point when he appeared to be, be finding things really difficult. And he just seemed to lose the edge. Sinan Sandal, there, the coach, 
arm around him, congratulating him. That was a, a job well done. Early on, I thought, you know, Nazadze was in with a shout, but he got caught twice, didn't he? Really well. Just 21 as well, Yield is. Hope he won't mind me saying he looks a little bit older, but he's only 21. <laughs> sure he won't mind. <laughs> A lot of seeing Aggies coming off the sleeves. Couldn't do anything about that, could he, the Georgian? Well, they may have missed out on a chance for a medal there, but the Georgians got, have got another one here. Tough task, however, because Yang Yong Wei of Chinese Taipei goes up against Georgi Sardalashvili. It'll be Yang in the white Jirogi Sardalashvili, the final of the under 60 kilo category. Here is their route to the, the final. Chu, Lopez, Beramov and Nozadze were downed by Yang on his way. And it was Kokolaev, Merlin, Yildiz and Agaev who fell to the youngster Sardalashvili. The referee in the middle for this one is Vyacheslav Piridyeko of Uzbekistan. Here's Neil. Don't look at the uh, world ranking. Sardalashvili, the youngster, uh, coming through here, doing better than his uh, higher rank, Nazadzi. And, uh, well, yes, and there's others at home as well. But this, uh, well, this man here, he's the world number one at the moment. World rank number one. And... Um, I've got to say that uh, he's one of the most consistent in the category. This young lad here, Sardellasvili, coming through and growing in stature. Uh, I think that they've got their eye on him uh, for uh, probably two years' time, but um, it's just a feeling. No, I think you're right, Neil. I think you're, you're exactly right. There's time for him to grow in to the weight. I think he's going to get past Chukvimiani and Nozadze, Papinashvili, all of whom are ahead of him in a really, really short space of time. And oddly enough, we I just mentioned Chukvimiani, Nozadze and Papinashvili, they're all ahead of them. And this guy, Sardalashvili, is in the top 20. <laughs> so where are they? <laughs> well, yeah, but, but uh, they all are, aren't they? But uh, Four yeah. Georgians in the top 20. <laughs> but this youngster uh, impresses me. Yeah, a bit special. He is. Came back in neatly there. Sardalash really doesn't want to start flirting with the edge. No need. Yang is a, a, a very intelligent fighter as well. Picks his moments. The most consistent on the world tour. And that means he's up there round about in the finals, winning gold and silver medals, bronze medals as well. Everywhere he goes, almost every event. Still a junior, Sardanashvili. <laughs> I mean... Didn't you say he was Cazette world champion as he well? Had, he, he had was previously. Yes. Yeah. No, not sorry. Junior, junior world champion in uh, last last year. Looking for the roll there, and uh, good to see him having a little go at it in uh, Newater as well. More renowned for their standing here, the Georgians. He t he, t he took a silver at this year's world ju uh, junior world championships. Starting to go to work a little bit now, Yang. Yeah, you can see how Sardalashvili's head has just dropped 
Just dropped a little. Yeah, it dropped a little because uh, all, all of a sudden he realised he's thrown some big guns across there, but uh, he can feel the danger as well for Yang. Yes, he's got to be upright to attempt the techniques, and it's when he's upright that he feels that pressure. Therefore, he just bends a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> going to get a Wazari for that. Well, he threatened it a couple of times earlier. Big hits across. Look at the readjustment there and clear score there on the side. One more of those and it will be all over. Minute and a half left to hang on. Oh, that was a nice <laughs> Ashy Waza there from Yang. I like the fact that Sardalas really was up and out of there. Yeah, he's he not going to mix up the ground, yeah. Look at that. He's looking for yes. the other score as well. He doesn't want to end just on a Wazari. He wants to finish this off. Don't right. forget, he's fighting the world number one here. And, and I think that he knows he's got to finish him off. He can't afford to hang around with Yang because Yang is not the kind of guy who's going to let this get away from him. Now he's going to keep on coming forward. You're right. And so it means that uh, Sardanishvili has got to really make sure that he, he attacks out of danger. That's exactly what he just did there. Yeah, Strong because attack. it breaks the grip up. Yeah. Restart, reset, 45 seconds to hold on. And I think we're really talking about Sardalas really just holding on and holding Yang off. Go on again! <laughs> Not far off was he from that. And again, he had a double stab at it there. And he's got to be careful coming up. <laughs> yeah, Yang can't afford to waste the time on the ground. He's got to make it pay. The time's running out. Sardalashvili has held on really well to this point. 19 seconds left to go. He can burn one Shido tactically. Got to quell the storm. He has to try and quell the storm. A good attack will do it. Better to attack than just to uh, go backwards. Hasn't got a great deal left. That was a good attack there from Yang. Eight seconds left on the clock. Wait, wait for it. <laughs> One but, more attack. That's yeah, what he needs. Burn, he's going to burn, burn the Shido. <laughs> yeah. I think he's gone for a Shido there. Needs to stand his ground. Left That's or where right? He needs to be yeah. in the middle. What a brilliant yeah, win for the now. youngster that was. That was a brilliant win for him. Okay, less of a celebration, Mr. Perit Yeko says. That really was a terrific win. As Neil has said, the world number one, top of the ranking list, falls to Sardalashvili. What a find for the Georgians. I mean, it's not as though he, 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 he's just come on the scene because they've seen him as a junior for a few years. A junior world silver medalist this year. Uh, the, the, the junior world champion the year before. So they've seen him coming for a while. But it's this year that he's hit the scene. And maybe they'll feel, ooh, you know, we should have sent him to Tashkent. <laughs> Given what he's done here with the world number one. But it's too late for that. He can go next year. And I'm sure he's going to. There is the uh, Sodi. Takes him right the way over. Starts going upwards there. Then it turns into a C and Aggie, doesn't it? But uh, it's a brilliant movement, change of direction, readjustment of balance. Everything. Had a, absolutely everything. Only ever been in one other IJF Grand Slam event. And that was the... Tbilisi Grand Slam where he won silver. Here he comes at his second and he wins gold. Absolutely brilliant and, <laughs> and you know he is a, a real class actor you know, and I think he, he, for two years time I think he's going to be their main focus over this next two years. 19 years old gold medal winner at the Abu Dhabi 
Grand Slam. And make no mistake about it, there was quality here, including throwing the world number one for Wazari in the final. Great effort. Right, we come now to the awarding ceremony for women in the under 48 kilo category. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awarding ceremony for the women's under 48 kilogram category. Please welcome Abu Dhabi Grand Slam medalists. Here are the medalists. Uh, the medals are being presented by the IJF Director for International Relations, Mr. Juan Carlos Barcos. The first of the medals, bronze medals, goes to Guo Chongying of China. There's a bronze medal also for Abiba Abujakinova of Kazakhstan. Silver medal goes to Francesca Milani of Italy. And a gold medal goes to Julia Figueroa of Spain. Price, money and flowers will be presented by the board member of the Saudi Judo Federation, Dr. Nahla Ibrahim. Absolutely brilliant performance by, by the youngster. And uh, he did it in style, he really did. Figueroa, she was absolute experience. Showed exactly what it was all about, didn't she? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Spain. And now the national anthem of Spain. For those of you who haven't seen an awarding ceremony before, we normally have a family picture. VIPs and the winning quartet, and then one for the photo album, the four medalists. The bronze medal winners were Guo and Abujakinova. Silver medal went to Milani. It was Figueroa to take the gold. performance of Figueroa showed her experience there in the end. Coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 52 kilo category. Fabian Kosher of Switzerland goes up against Gafen Primo of Israel. It'll be Kosher in the white judogi, Primo in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Ramzidin Saidov of Uzbekistan. Had a busy time of it a couple of weeks ago when the world championships were staged in Tashkent. Here he is in the middle working again. <laughs> As we all are, back to work. These two have, have uh, actually faced it. This is the seventh time that they faced each other, these two. So uh, that happens on the world tour. Uh, what happens is that they 
meet each other often for medals to uh, get world ranking points uh, but they meet each other on the world tour and these have uh, gone three three so far oh okay so it's all evens Primo up at number seven in the world ranking list. And uh, Fabian Korsha just a few places lower down at 10. So not a great deal between them. Well, they're kind of fighting each other like they know each other, aren't they? Absolutely. Left to left. You've got to be careful that you don't touch the legs. Not allowed to touch below the belt line. Primo lost her bronze medal contest to Distria Krasnici of Kosovo at the World Championships, and it was Fabian Kosha who had a round two loss, quite surprisingly, actually, to Ergambetova of Kazakhstan in Tashkent a couple of weeks ago. Shido, peace up there. fight somebody that many times you you get to know their every every move when they're going to attack when they're going to swap change direction oh Chigari Wazari scored so Primo gets a Wazari there for that oh Chigari Well, I think he's having a look to see if that didn't warrant Ippon, but I, I'm not so sure it was two parts. I think to do with the arm. On, on the other side is um, below, below the, the leg. Belt. Yeah. Below the belt, sorry. So it might have uh, been below the belt there. If it was below the belt in order to get leverage, then it won't count. And they'll pick up a Shido anyway. Yeah. And the thing is, normally Shani Hershko would be out of his chair. Yeah, but he knew, he, he, he he didn't knew move, it. Because it's on his side. Yeah. He could see it. He so, knew it. Yeah. Oh, good pressure. Yeah, they, they know exactly what the score is there. And uh, like you say, that was uh, away from us, but uh, in the commentary position. So we couldn't see it. But if that arm drops below and catches the uh, bottom half, you get more leverage from it. Oh, going again. again. I said she had to be careful because uh, she went almost a couple of times there below the belt line for the counter. She's kind of dominated Primo, but uh, hasn't got anything other than two Shidos on the board.
Two Shido's apiece, anybody's match this. Oruchigari again from Primo. Primo's the one that's been leading off. It's a good, uh, good attempt there. Kusha, not far off there with that Makikomi. Looking at the, the background to this pair and their record, it's like a tennis match. You win one, I win one. <laughs> and, and Yeah, and, and that's the way it's going to go, isn't it? All the way, I think, in their career. Well, unfortunately, on a good day. Un unfortunately for Primo, the... The, the, the form says that Kosha should win this one then. <laughs> She'll be wanting to upset that pattern. You win one, <laughs> I win one. Because she, she won the last time out, so she needs to change that pattern. <laughs> and it's into golden score now. Any score, the first four minutes gone, and uh, now the time will click up. As long as they attack at the right time. Oh, she's caught Primo. Now then, did she turn? She obviously turned out there. It didn't get a landing because the referee was right on it. Yes, that was right at his feet. Too much on the front. Wow, what a good match this is. Really good match. Maki Komi on the left side from Primo. Just had Kosha pushing forward and defending against that. Never really took her around, they just fell forward, but it was a good entry. Looking to go over on that side again. Mm, that wasn't the strongest. It wasn't at all, and uh, possibility for Cheeto for that. Yeah, I wouldn't like to see it for that one because that was a failure. Oichigari again, this That's time it, got it. over. This time it's a, a kosher yeah. <laughs> one. <laughs> oh dear. That wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> that was good, Neil. <laughs> yeah, that was just... Uh, You're well. really pulling them out today. <laughs> uh, uh. Primo gets the uh, Wazari needed then. She had to work for that, didn't she? Uh, but she was on top of that match, <laughs> I have to say. She uh, really was on top of the match. Yeah, she gave plenty there. And a little bit upset. I'm not sure if she's upset because she expected a little bit more. Well, it wasn't, even, it wasn't even her turn <laughs> to, to win. She did. Yeah. But it was a very, very good contest. The highlights of this bronze medal contest. This time, the Ochigari is uh, completely above board, and uh, it was uh, with a good grip. This time, the left arm on the uh, back there controlling the back all the way over some relief wasn't it just yeah just i'm just looking at her reaction there and i'm not sure whether it's because she just expected a little bit more and uh, the gold medal she was there for the gold medal yeah a lot of hard work went into that we come now to the second of the bronze medal contest in the under 52 kilo category Yasmin Lima of Brazil goes up against Odette Giofrida of Italy. It'll be Lima in the white jidogi, Giofrida in blue. Welcome, the, referee from the referee in the middle for this one is Mr. Roberto Correa of Chile. And now, welcome to the Giofrida certainly uh, struggling for form of late. This young lady here will be uh, all out here trying to uh, get a win. 
over the Don't former Olympic games. silver medalist. Three Olympic Games silver medalist and three times Grand Slam winner, Odet Jufrida. Youth against experience, here we go. Jufrida lost her semi-final to the Yora Keldiyorova of Uzbekistan. And uh, it was Keldiyorova who applied a really strong Jujigatami that had the Italian wincing in pain. Just held on a little bit too long before she, she tapped out. And uh, I'm kind of surprised, given the pain that she was in, that she's out here. Anyway, I saw her with the Italian team doctor and he assured me that she was okay. Whereas Giafrida was <laughs> not that sure. <laughs> you are going to yeah. <laughs> you are gonna be alright. Oh nice seeing Aggie. Well we know she has that, don't we? The uh seeing Aggie is always there, the yeah. experience, the gameplay. <laughs> Well, didn't have any signs of pain there, dear Frida, when attempting that Seonagi. Lima just a little bit too far away with the right leg. Again, too far away. She may be able to catch a lesser experienced player than Giafrida, but Lima not able to make any headway with that effort. Notice how she's pulling away there just to break the strong grip of Lima off. And then uh, in she goes then with the Cianagi. It's all about creating space. To do that, you need to get rid of the strong arm. So as soon as they're gripped up, Giafrida will move back. Chance to work on the ground now. Giafrida's already come unstuck once down there today. She won't want to be giving up a second contest there picks up a penalty for passivity. Can't afford to uh, fall back on the pace. Give Frida. And Lima is the one that gets the Shido, so Shido a piece up there. Yeah, I think she'd gone to that technique just that few times too many without really getting any movement. So false attack penalty was dished out there. Well, we're talking about the uh, youngsters coming up and then the uh, older, experienced ones, fighters. Uh, Giafrida, I think she, it'll be her third, if not fourth Olympic Games that she'll be going for. I think it's third. But um, for Lima, be the first. The point being that she has quite a good deal of experience. Yeah, the point being that she has so so much experience, and sometimes there's near well ten years between them. Yeah, looking to go to her third Olympic Games, competed in Tokyo and Rio, because yeah. in in London 
they did have the bronze medal winner. And I'll have to search my um, my memory banks to tell you who that was. You're going to tell me. I know you are. Any second. Uh, and one of the bronze medal winners from London is here in the under 52 kilo category, Priscilla Neto. Oh, nice, not, Ashi Waza. Yeah. Beautiful opportunity, Ashi Waza now in for the Shimi Waza, and that wasn't far off. Just manages to pop her head out there. That arm just giving her a bit of uh, stick there. Didn't quite ground that, did she? Not quite grounded. Right, so without looking, memory banks have kicked in. Rosalba Fortuniti was the other bronze medal winner, and Kamei was the gold medal winner. But I'm lost for the silver, Neil. You're going to have to help me out there. <laughs> I'm sure it'll, it'll come back to you. I know it will. <laughs> I haven't quite lost it yet then. Half a minute of golden score, Lima Jufrida. Penalty apiece. No score as yet. I think it was the Cuban who was the silver medal winner in London. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Now then, that was not an attack. So that uh, is going to get a second penalty, I think, just for the drop there. Second one goes up to Lima. No rotation whatsoever. No breaking of balance there. If they get up quickly from it and go forward, sometimes they'll get away with it. Second Shido then uh, for Gefrida. So it's all evens now. Now everybody. Well, it's anybody's match now. It really is. I've seen better entries. She just sat down with a leg across her back. You know, if you get an opportunity like that, especially at this kind of stage, you have to really take advantage of it. That didn't happen. Gafrida backing her up now. Can't afford a slip now. Neither one of them can, otherwise it's gone. No more mistakes. I like to think at these points in a contest who is better served by being on the mat for longer just you know looking at this and maybe lima here is better off well you know, she's the younger one isn't she so i mean the, the longer it goes the better it is for her probably because sometimes we talk about experience and someone is going to find a way through and that i don't see it at the moment from Giafrida. It's almost as though, you know, OK, I've run out of, of ideas. It's almost uh, yeah. stalemate, isn't it? Yeah. Almost fell on that arm as well, of uh, uh, Gifrida.
So, somebody, and uh, I think, oh, no, they're going to let it carry on. It was, uh, yeah, yeah. That was a close one. <laughs> I think uh, the top table got involved there. Gave a last chance. Here we go. Well, no, that broke a balance. <laughs> a little bit of uh, playmanship coming out there from... Frida. And I don't think Odette needs to do that. It just takes away from your concentration. You know, when you start remonstrating with the referee and things like that. Leave it up to the referee. He knows what he's doing. That was an attack. I don't know what was wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the Brazilian crowd for you. Yeah. <laughs> this time it was the Brazilians. Yeah. Well, like you say, if you listen to any of them, like, what about that one? Blocked again. And this is where Lima's got to be careful. She's already shown some weak attacks. Oh, That's it, it's all over go. now. Kiriashi there and uh, catches her just on the move. Absolutely flat on her back for Ippon there. Yeah, leave it to the judo. Yeah. Don't worry and about it. Did, uh, it's exactly what happened there. Judo won in the end. You know, she's one of the most successful under 52 kilo category fighters on the circuit with judo. And good judo over the years, you know, really entertained us. And how does she end it? A lovely piece of Ashi Waza. Nice bit of Ashi Waza just to finish off. We love the Ashi Waza. This girl here has had uh, good experience out there. Now she takes the far leg she does. as well. It's a Kuri Ashi and uh, takes both the legs there. Yeah. And uh, wow, boom. Look how she finishes it off. She actually almost scored a little bit early on. This time, no mistakes. Yeah, it's got that Okuriashi movement, hasn't it? And then really going in around the back and taking both the legs in a kind of Nidan Kosodagari end. Right, well, we spoke about one Neto. Here's another. Astrid Neto of France goes up against Diora Kildiorova of Uzbekistan. It's the gold medal contest in the under 52 kilo category. And this is the route that the two fighters took to get here. Perez Box, Irahui and Giafrida were down by Kildi Yorova on her way. It was NDI Lima and Primo that uh, Neto, or who Neto had to get past. That took them to the final. The referee in the middle for this one is Heather Lundgens of Belgium. And now, please welcome the finalists. And it the was Korean the Cuban in the... It was in London. Of course yeah. it was. Annette Bermoy Acosta. What a champion she was. Terrific uh, athlete. Well, a sister fought in the under 57 kilo category, had a hand injury. She's been suffering for that for a, a long time. But it's perfectly possible that Priscilla who's still, uh, um, not Priscilla uh, Astrid, who's still got a bit of time left, could do something <laughs> Kelly Yorova in the white jadogi, Neto in blue Kelly well, Yorova has good form at the moment she really has, and that was separation straight away, now then that's a, that's a good feel, that, for, for the uh, match. And just to give an indicator that you cannot separate when you break away from the grips. Yeah, that was slightly amateurish from Keldi Yorova. Yeah, just uh, not thinking about it. A big right arm there of Neto yeah. over the back there. Well, she's got a good seeing at it. Sianagi Kodirova really wants to get her head up. Oh, oh, the oh, it's, done. Done it. it's all over. What about that? Now, did she go directly into it? We're going to have a look to see if she went directly into it. Oh, 
I think it was direct. So I, it's not going to count, actually. She, she, she went directly from the Tomanagi into the Tomanagi. Uh, sorry, the uh, Tomanagi into the Jujigatami. So they'll take it off. She knows it as well. Well, she picks up a Shido for that infringement, but it could have been dangerous, and it could really have caused some problems to Neto's arm. Well, there's a lot of people that don't feel that uh, that, uh, that actual combination should be banned. Uh, you know, I, I have to say that I have uh, my own feelings about it. You know, I just think it's such a smooth technique. It really is. It, uh, when it comes to transition, it's your absolute melting point of transition. But um, anyway, it's not allowed at the moment. So quite rightly, it was taken off. So uh, she was going to get a third Shido there, but that's been taken off as well. So uh, she still gets a chance here. She's got to uh, keep her calm and not make any more mistakes. Difficulty for Keldiorova is that that movement from the Tomoinagi into the Jujigatami has been almost removed she's going to be very very reluctant to get involved in that and it's such a good move just was like into say, it it's too quickly the, if yeah. you break the balance then go in for it you can do it but uh, yeah well marco spitka is shouting out yazo it's good uh, however actually i didn't think it was that good <laughs> you know, I mean, I know what he's talking about. Keep up the tempo. Keep up the rate that, of that's attacks. That's the main thing, isn't I it? I think that's what he meant because that was not the best of attacks. But it was the right timing just to, you know, force uh, a, a Shido to Neto. who's just taking it easy uh, for a while now. She's decided, well, Kel Diorova is going to do herself, herself out of a medal. Or, or the gold medal, anyway. Uh, and see, the leg came back. Do you see that? Into the Tomanagi. The leg was going over, and then she said no. So you know, uh, what I can't understand is they know it's not allowed, so why they... Uh, drill it. You know, they drill yeah, it. They're yeah. obviously drilling it, because she does it very, very smoothly. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> oh, well, why you wouldn't drill it a little bit differently, yes, anyway? Yes, going to have to. Well, you know, but Neto's as guilty. Well, that's two yeah, Shido's apiece yeah. now. Cody Yorova has a chance here. She feels it. Just go forward. Be positive here. Neto, she also has to be forward. She nearly grabbed the leg there. How many mistakes? Just managed not to grab the leg there on the way down. It, it's just a little bit too untidy. Uh, for me, you know, for this level, re re really got to tighten up a few things as uh, Schmidtke with an, an athlete who, whose judo and movement and everything is so good. I uh, uh, saw her a couple of years ago. I just thought, oh, yeah, this is one for, for the future. Yeah. Oh, she's just gone down for yeah. a Wazari now. She's gone down for a Wazari. Just stayed there, that's a uh, split second too long. There, allowed Neto to do the Ochi. Got one attack left, if she gets out of this. One more attack, here we go, yeah. seven seconds. Can she get across in time? No. She does. That'll be it now. It was uh, part of an attack. Uh, yes, they they exactly. know that, don't they? They and, do know and, that. And stepped off. <laughs> yeah. 
not she though, just part of an attack. So uh, uh, a bit of a shame for her, Kodi Yorova uh, wins the silver medal instead of the gold and uh, it was was done too closely, uh, well, as part of the same movement of the uh, Tom and Aggie. Wasn't allowed. And so Neto wins the gold. Yeah, Astrid Neto began very quickly roughing it up mixing it up a little bit and then i think she did the right thing which was just to calm things down a little bit leave it up to keldy yorova keldy yorova then went on to make a couple of errors and at that point neto decided well i can just take things that little bit easier now can't i i don't have to try and force it bit by bit as Keldi Yorova began to open up, there were opportunities for Neto to attack, and she came in with that single score, the winning score in the end. Astrid Neto of France, the gold medal winner in the under 52 kilo category. Okay, we come now to the awarding ceremony for men in the under 60 kilo category. Here are the four medalists and the awarding party. The medals are being presented by the president of the International Judo Federation, Mr. Marius Visa. The first of the bronze medals goes to Sally Yildiz of Turkey. There's a bronze medal also for Balabe Agayev of Azerbaijan. Silver medal goes to Yang Yungwei of Chinese Taipei. But the gold medal goes to Georgi Sardalashvili of Georgia. What a performance from uh, Sardalashvili, wow. Just a youngster, 19 years of age. 19, 21 by the time the Olympics comes. Watch out for him. Yeah, I mean, if you can throw the world number one <laughs> like that. Well, they're going to put him out there, aren't they, with uh, all the other ones to give them the chance that they deserve as well. But I just think he'll establish himself. And now the national anthem of Georgia. that we've heard that anthem <laughs> it's not the first time that he's heard it when he's been standing on top of the podium and i dare say it won't be the last for those two <laughs> things that combination it certainly won't be us hearing it and him standing on top of the podium Yildiz and agaev were the bronze medal winners it was yang who took the silver sardalashvili impressed us in taking his first ever Grand Slam goal.
Coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 66 kilo category. Wahil Ezin of Algeria goes up against Yeset Kuanov of Kazakhstan. It'll be Ezin in the white jadogi, Kuanov in blue. And actually, this is both of these athletes uh, have done extremely well to get this far in a really, really good field. The referee in the middle for this one is Ganbold Niamsok of Mongolia. Yeah, like uh, Sheldon said, you know, they, they really deserve to be there. I mean, uh, when you look at uh, Kowanov, his world ranking, 103. That, that uh, is Ezi that we've seen working out there, and uh, he's at 72 uh, in the world ranking. So both of these fighters, absolutely, their world rankings will change. And we see it, the youngsters come through, they establish themselves, uh, they pick up... Uh, medals at the uh, senior events and then of course they start to accumulate world rankings and they go higher up they've got to be within the top 20 of course to qualify for the olympic games and that's only to quite get the qualification points uh, if you're like georgia and they've got three in the top 20 they can select who they want to send so not always the highest world ranked actually in that country gets to be uh, uh, the Olympic representative. Yes, that is indeed the case. And then one could really go into looking at method of selection nationally because different countries select things in a different way. I yeah, they might send the one that they believe is going to win an Olympic medal or cope with the pressures of an Olympic Games. Or they may have their hands tied and they themselves are tied to whomsoever is highest on the world ranking list or who has the highest number of medals internationally in a given period. There are all sorts of... Or know, the team manager might yeah. get the, the nod and they say, right, it's your decision. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, variants, aren't there? But they may it have does to cause a, a lot of trouble. They may have to have a fight off, as some countries do. Yeah, I did that <laughs> in, uh, in Belgium. And, uh, and under four we had a fight off, and it was recorded in, in private. That wasn't far off there, was it? That seeing Aggie there, very low by Azine. Well, there's been a more recent uh, public fight fight off with Mar Maruyama and Abe <laughs> at the Kodakan look at that yeah. one 20 minutes 21 minutes that last
And I suppose Guy Tiro Martin must be thinking, w w where's he going with this? Just yeah. slowing him down a little bit. He's going to change direction yeah. with it. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> he's not comfortable at all, Guy Tiro Martin. Do you know, some people just have uh, an awkward stance for you, something that's not quite right. And uh, I, uh, I'm assuming that Piras is that person for Gatira Martin. Just, it doesn't stand right for him. He doesn't feel comfortable. And, you know, you're dead right, you know, with your... He's going to get a second Shido here. Piras looked to me as though he was, you know, interested in grouping up. Kaitero Martin looked as though he was interested in keeping Piraz off. He doesn't like it, does he, when he gets two hands on, that's for sure. Yeah, he's got to make something happen now, Piraz. No, dear. He's picked up another gripping infringement, Piraz. An unforced error. He had to be really careful there to keep that gap, as small as it was, between him and his opponent. And now they're level on two penalties apiece. You're right, though. It seems like Piraz is the one that's uh, really taken the initiative here. He's the one going forwards.
No lo molaste, no lo molaste. Avanti, avanti. Got to produce something. You, know, you have that ah! dominant position, but you're not able to come up with a really big attack for the referee to start looking at your opponent as the one who has fallen behind. Yeah, I was uh, I just hoping for that one, wasn't he? I think uh, Perez. <laughs> it was uh, Gutierrez Martin that dropped on his back there. A little bit of a shout, not enough, I'm afraid. Yeah, the Chinese athlete earlier on had a much uh, bigger ki eye, didn't she? Guo. <laughs> Could hear it reverberating <laughs> around the whole stadium. Well, he came up off the ground, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, great opportune moment. That, yeah. that was really terrific stuff. It really was. As soon as uh, Gitarra Martin was on the way up there, Perez came in for a technique. Have they a want to have a look at see, that. Yeah. Yeah. See if it got a landing. I'm not sure how many, whether we can see it from the other side. We can't no, see it from there. So. No, he didn't. No. No. He absolutely didn't. We're already back underway with no score, but worth having a look. 25 seconds to go. One more shido either way, or any score will decide this. I've got to say, we haven't seen that many uh, golden scores, and that many um, three shidos have been decided. Not that many. Yes, that was the go-to technique. Good change of direction, wasn't it, from uh, Gutierrez Martin? So, sorry, by Tur uh, Perez. Just lost contact with the hand, didn't he? There wasn't enough. Another big attack here to really put him in the best position. Tira Martin, irrespective of whether that was super strong or not, it was uh, an attack. Can't afford to be second here, Piraz. Okay, got the leg trapped after that little slip. There with the attempted Sutemi was up. And it's got to be strong here and get the turn at the right time if that leg comes out. He was Im imploring the referee there to call Mate. Just about, and uh, that one-handed sleeve grip there, just about getting a movement from his opponent. Bravo, 
the golden score period's gone pretty quickly. We're almost up to two minutes. And they haven't done a great deal, but it's tense. Just enough, isn't it? Just yeah. enough. And uh, again, a little bit of a shout here. And again, a slip. Yeah, well, Gadara Martin just kind of going down there for a bit of a move. And Piraz not able to take advantage of the fact that momentarily there was an op there was a an, I'll say was a, a, a chance there went begging. Maybe we uh, maybe I'm being harsh, but for me, you're gonna there are going to be very few chances here. And now that we're in golden score, there's only going to be one. <laughs> These uh, kind of techniques are the uh, kind of thing that's going to win it for him. He can just go ahead on attacks. If he can do it again, another couple. Get out of the corner. Got to attack now. He had no choice but to attack. He hadn't gone left, he hadn't gone right, he backed himself into that corner. I, think, I mean, this is a strong athlete, you can see it's physically intimidating for that weight category. He, he can't afford to get pushed into a corner where then his only outlet is that Sutemi was a. got to produce something now, Piraz, because Gaitiro Martin, to be honest, has been the one who you can name his attempts at different techniques. <laughs> they're not strong, they're not threatening, but they, they're the only efforts being produced by either fighter. Piraz is just making things really difficult without producing something. Well, he just realises it now, he knows he's got to go forwards just that bit now. Another strong attack, Perez has got to go in. Yeah, this is it now, last roll of the dice. Well, we're not going to count that one. Can't count that. Perez has to know that Gaitiro Martin at the moment has the advantage. And another big attack by the Spaniard is going to be enough for him to take it. Can't get past the grips. Is that enough to save him? Can't really penalise him now, can you? Well, it's all over. But well, uh, uh, it'd be by Guy Tiro Martin will get the penalty, if anything, if they wanted to call it an end there. I'm glad they didn't. Now they can't. Yeah, yeah. Really now, Piraz on a knife edge. Got to come up with an attack. Way too far wow, that away. Was a, that was just a drop, wasn't yeah. it? Way too far away. He literally just dropped there, Katira Martin, and uh, he might have just thrown that away yeah. there. Just, uh, he just too literally desperate. Too desperate. threw it away. Absolutely, he just dropped. He, he was set to win that, and it was uh, his way. He just needed a strong attack, didn't he? That was all. Wow. Anyway. I think um, Matteo Pires is... He expended more energy in his key eye at the end than he did during most of the contest. You know, he's lucky to be taking this bronze medal here. Would have liked to have seen just one really big effort uh, from him. But, you know, within the rules that we allow, he was in it. OK, there was a Sumigeji effort from him. But coming to the, to the back end, especially...
how they got to the final. Shwer, Haddad and Ezin and Piraz were down by Bucic on his way. It was Awad, Seduki, Preciado and Kuanov, not a bad looking lineup, who were down by Manzi. The referee in the middle for this one is Elizabeth Gonzalez of Mexico. Well, Neil, a second Italian. We've already seen one on the podium. We know that whatever happens, Manz, Elias Manzi is going to end up on the podium. He'd love to finish that bit further ahead than his rival. But yeah, I think it's going to be a mix, this, isn't it? Uh, Manzi here uh, has a good chance against this man here. He's never been in a major final before. No. Nope. In fact, any, out of any of... I mean, you were coming out with the stats with him. Yeah. It's the first... <laughs> 14.